You're gonna make it. Okay, yeah, let's. These are, this is the grass. That's the grass. It sounds good. Why don't you put it in there? Well, this is an unusual technique. Oh, strike one. Do it again. Miss. Do it. I moved. Oh, it moved. Oh, that's a penalty stroke then. Okay. Ready? Go. <laughs> <laughs> you did it! Yes! All right! Good yes! job! <laughs> wow! Yes! <laughs> hey, can, uh, can you please teach Daddy how to do that? Because Daddy's not as good as you. <laughs> First, we gotta get off the video. Oh, okay. Should I turn off the video? Yes. Can you say bye bye? Bye bye. Ever since I took this video, I've been meaning to get a putting green for my basement. So I figured, why not just make one? I could even make it kind of cool by designing some kind of ball return system where, whether you make it or you miss it, the ball will always be sent back. And to make it even more cool, I dreamed up a lever-activated golf ball elevator system where you can use your club to eject a new ball each time you want to make a putt. Is it overly complex? Of course it is. This is Fisher's shop. Now let's get busy. The green I designed calls for a couple main runners that are over 8 feet long, so I picked up some 10-foot 2x6s and cut them down to size. To fasten everything together, I put down some cross bracing every 16 inches, so I set up a stop block and I was able to cut those out pretty easily. The last bit of framework was the landing area which is a 10 inch extension off of one of the ends. Next step was to grab the driver and some decking screws and put the frame together. To help me out with this project, the folks over at Micaton sent me their newest product called the Magnet Driver. It consists of a collection of pretty much any driver bit that you'd need, along with a color-coded collar that slides over it. There's a powerful magnet embedded into the collar that holds your screw right up onto the bit so that you can work one-handed. And I gotta say, I was pretty darn impressed with how strong that magnet actually was. That is cool. <laughs> Yeah, it didn't even fall off when I put the drill down. <laughs> it's cool. I think the best thing about it is how it frees up a hand. Sometimes I needed to hold things square while screwing the braces in, and this allowed me to do it very easily. So be sure to check out their website and see all the other cool features that are included in this product, and I'll put a link to them down in the video description. Thanks, Micaton. Next step was to cut down the surface of the green. Now since these are 8 foot sheets, I have to use a circular saw to trim them down first because well, my shop is so small. So I clamped on a straight edge and did a quick cross cut. With that done, I had the room I needed to run things over the table saw and to get it down to the proper width. And once again with the piece for the landing area. Next I tilted the blade by like four degrees and cut an edge on the board I'll use in the trough that collects all the missed shots. Then with the flat edge down, I draw a V pattern across the canted edge and I'll cut that out over the bandsaw. These will make the angles that filter the missed shots to the center. A little bit of sanding takes off the bandsaw marks and then I cut the other canted edge on the table saw. And this gives you kind of a parallelogram profile. Then I drilled in a two inch hole right in the center and as close to the top of the brace as I could. Now when that board is seated flush up against the brace, all the balls that fall into that trough will roll to the center and then through the hole. And securing that in place now, I poked another hole in the next brace and cut down some small strips for this next piece that I put in. It's a 2x6 that I put in on an angle with some walls to filter the balls down into another 2 inch hole. Now, regardless of where the balls end up in the trough, they'll all funnel down through the second hole. And then I'll just start the PVC return pipe here. This design will give the balls a good drop if you make the shot, and even if you don't, the same ramp will be used as they're filtered in from the trough. 
Now the height of the putting green is crucial because you need the return to be tilted enough to send the balls back without them stalling inside. So here I'm putting on some feet to bring it up to its final height. Now it's time to notch out the braces for the return pipe. Fortunately, these notches don't have to be all that precise, so similar to my tee shots, I start off with good form, but ultimately just end up smashing things and hoping for the best. With the notches cut out, I could slide in the return pipe and mark where I needed to cut it down. I also picked up some pipe hangers that needed to be shortened up a bit. I use these to hold the return pipe at exactly the right angle. They would just clip over the pipe and then I'd screw one on each side of all the braces. Then I flipped things back over, drilled, countersunk, and fastened the top down. Using a four inch hole saw, I was able to punch out the cup. And then I poured some ranch dressing down and spread that all around. And when I had that everywhere, I could roll out the turf and weight it down for the night. Once it was dry, I could use a utility knife to go around the edges and trim it down to size. Now we're ready for the sides. I used a half inch MDF and started by cutting the tall sections first. Once I had all the sides cut, I clamped together the two tall sides and cut off one of their corners so that they blend into the shorter sides. And then I clamped all the sides onto the green and used a trim router to round over all the edges. Once I was happy with how all the joints were meeting up, I went ahead and fastened all the sides onto the frame. Then using a flush trim saw, I could lop off the end of the return pipe. And then I could go around the whole thing and fill in all the screw holes with joint compound. Now if you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen me post this. So I've been down in the shop the last couple days prototyping something that I'm going to incorporate in one of my future videos. I uh, just wanted to show it off because it works and it came out of my brain. So I'm super excited about that. So basically what it does is it is an elevator for golf balls. Once the golf balls go in, you push down on this lever and it ratchets them up. Okay, so then you can feed in another one, so on and so forth until eventually they come out of the top. So now that I built the prototype, I could make a new one that is much more clean and refined. I start by cutting out the sides on the miter saw and then use the band saw to notch them out. One of the sides gets a couple two inch holes drilled in for where the balls come out and for where they go in. And another hole for a small pivot pin that the main lever will use. With the sides taken care of, I could cut out the main upright piece. I clean off an edge of one of the 2x6 scraps that we have and then, referencing that new edge, I cut out the piece that we need. This piece also gets a couple notches cut out of it, so I took it over the bandsaw and took care of those. I cut it to its final length and then measured out where the hole for the pivot pin is to be drilled. Now I could cut out a piece for the front and the bottom. The front has a small notch that gives the main lever some room to go up, so took care of that really quick over the bandsaw. For the pivot pins, I just use 1 8 inch sinker nails. Since the nails I have are coated and not really all that smooth, I just chuck them into my drill and give them a quick sanding to grind off any irregularities. I cut out this piece, which acts as a sear and holds the golf balls up so that a new one can be loaded in. I slide that into the main upright and drop in one of the pins in place to hold it steady. Since I want the sear to have limited movement, I have to glue on the stop 
when it's in the forward position. So I hold it into place, add a little bit of CA glue, and then hit it with a bit of activator to make it permanent. Next, I took it back out, and now I can trim down that pivot pin to its appropriate size. With all that set, I can now start to work on the main lever. I use the 2 inch Forstner bit again to carve out the scoop that the balls will ride in. And then cut out a notch for the sear to pass through. and then round it off the bottom corners. There's a tiny shark fin-like piece that also goes on the lever that aids in lifting the balls up. So I cut this out and then rounded the edge on the disc sander and then used a bit of CA glue to fasten it onto the lever. drilling the hole for the pin and then trimming the nail down to size. Okay, so at this point I could clamp all the pieces together to test out the functionality. I fed some balls through and was able to tell that the lever was hitting the upright a bit, so I needed to sand it down just a smidge to get it working smoothly. Now it's time to fasten things together. I chose to screw in the sides to the main upright in case I ever needed to disassemble things in the future to make more adjustments, but for the rest of the pieces, I could just glue them together. Next, I put in three tiny hooks that will hold the rubber bands, two for the main lever, and then one for the sear in the back. And to give the ball some direction, I made this tiny chute that they can roll down when they're ejected. I sanded an angle into it and then fastened it on just under the top cutout. Now to find the right spot to mount it, I simply held it up against the end, loaded up the return pipe with some balls, and then nudged it until they dropped into the elevator. And once they popped in there, I verified that things worked and then marked the location on the sides. I made a little wooden bracket to fasten the elevator onto the green, and, and then I had a toenail and a screw in the front to make it secure. However, in the plans, I've put in some mounting tabs that'll make this much easier and cleaner looking. Kind of like some of my golf shots, I've noticed that sometimes there's a chance that my balls might go backwards instead of forwards. So, to fix this, I made a tiny wedge-shaped piece that will keep them from going the wrong way. With the elevator finished, I could go ahead and sand off all the joint compound and smooth everything out. And then I slathered on a couple coats of primer and then sanded it all down again to 220. In hindsight, I could have waited until after painting to put on the turf and save myself a bunch of masking time, but by doing it the way I did, it allowed for me to very easily get the turf glued and trimmed all the way up to the edges. So. If you're going to build this, just do whatever you think will be easiest. And the last step was to put on a tiny cushion onto the lever that will help grip your club when you're using the elevator. And here it is. I just got to say, this thing turned out kind of cool. And even for having the nickname of Sir Shank a lot, this has sure been a lot of fun. I just love how the return system works and how I can pop out another ball with just a quick press of the lever. Can I try it? Yeah, go ahead. You know how? Uh-huh. That's right. Yes! Yes! <laughs> Good job, man. Now, some of you may have been wondering why I made the sidewalls so high. My thinking was that it would be a lot of fun if I designed it in a way where I could add some putt-putt obstacles that require you to use bank shots. 
Yeah, so you're going to have to bank it off of one of those walls. Go ahead. Hey! Hey! Yay! Wow, this is no challenge for you at all. Yep. I sure knew my son would love the idea, and it opens the door for him to be creative and dream up some fun and challenging shots to make. So thanks for sticking around and watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and tell me what you think in the comments below. And if you'd like to build this for yourself, I'll have the plans available on my website. I'll leave a link for them in the video description as well. And if you golf left-handed, well then just mirror the plans. Or learn to golf right-handed. Also, you may have noticed that the Fisher Shop t-shirts are now available and can be purchased on my website. They come in all different colors and they have funny taglines too. So if you enjoy what I'm doing and would like to support the channel, it sure would be a real easy way to do it. And you get an awesome t-shirt out of it too. So again, thanks a ton, take care, and we'll see you next time. Oh. Oh. Works a lot better when you put the battery in. Idiot. This board is literally pressing against the wall on that side. I have no more room. Small shop problems. Oh, it's already recording? Oh, crap. Well, I guess I need to make a zero clearance for that, don't I? Uh, so when the balls do drop in, um, they'll do stuff. for your home.